What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. Have you ever had that dream where you're standing on the top of a pyramid dressed in sun god robes and thousands of naked women are throwing pickles at you? Why am I the only one that ever has that dream? That's right guys, we're back with another Xtool D1 video. Why? Because they sent me a bunch of material to cut and engrave and I just wanted to go over with you. Really? That's right, the D1 is humming along in the background right now, but that project's for a totally different video. So let's sit down and uh, check out what this thing can actually do. Okay, so those of you that are unfamiliar, this is the Xtool D1 10 watt diode laser. And I feel like I don't need to say this again, but if you haven't watched my initial setup video right here, um, I was surprised when I found out that this thing can cut 10 millimeter pine two passes. That's crazy. After that video, I kept getting a bunch of questions on what exactly this thing can and can't engrave. So there's some things that you can engrave that you should never engrave. And most of this stuff is because of the noxious fumes. Ever try to cut vinyl with a laser? If you really wanna cut vinyl, get yourself like a Cricut or a Silhouette. And I will link down below to a kind of list of things to not try to cut with a diode laser. Okay, so let's start off with some of the, like the obvious ones and like kind of like a, a little bit more crafty ones. You can laser cut through paper. This is like kind of a thicker cardstock. You can also engrave and cut on cardboard. I know a lot of people that make uh, like really cool, like stackable things with cardboard because one, cardboard's really easy to cut with a laser and two, your final product isn't super heavy. Like if I stacked up a bunch of pieces of wood like this that were all carved so you could see in through it, it'd get pretty heavy pretty quick. Next, we can cut and engrave on leather. So. I, this is a piece of leather I originally had. This is about two mil thick. Um, it did start to cut it. Again, I had a problem with uh, the, the, the machine kind of grabbed it. I didn't have this weighted down either because I'm a horrible person. But it will engrave and cut through this much uh, this thickness of leather. I think it's about two, two and a half millimeters. I don't know, I just tried to measure it with my little calipers. They did send me some thinner uh, black leather. I thought this looked pretty cool. Check that out. So I didn't realize at first. Upon initial, when I did a test engrave, I didn't think it was getting into the leather enough. So I cranked it up. So that is my fault. But what it ended up doing is giving it kind of this, can you see that? It, it's, it's kind of sheer, which I thought was really cool, but it's starting to uh, it's starting to fall apart already on me. But you can definitely um, engrave. If I were to use their settings and not up them, it probably <laughs> would have turned out better. Um, so this is an engrave with a cut. So I just brought this, uh, this free Harley SVG in, and then I used their outline feature to run a line around it to cut after the engrave. So when I say Xtool sent me out a bunch of different materials, I'm not kidding. This is a rock. <laughs> so I reached out to the fam. I asked them what I should engrave. Somebody said the Jack Daniels logo. If you look at that, so one, this rock is not exactly flat. And two, I probably went with a little too much of a detailed engrave on this, but it definitely engraved it. You can see the Jack Daniels, you can see the number seven, some of the other writing and stuff you can't see so much, but I don't know if that's necessarily the laser. I think it's more of the fact that this thing is not completely flat. And when you get into real detail like, stuff like that, you really need to be really flat. So. They even sent me some stuff that I didn't think I could engrave. They sent me this like, coaster thing that has, it already has a coating on it, but my concern was that the guard of the laser was gonna hit it. So I went ahead and engraved it on the back and it turned out really good. Um, it just, I, I think we could have gone a little heavier and taken off the rest of the, the finish and gotten down to the wood, but check that out. Looks really good. After I had this frame and I was like, I've run into the same problem. And then I realized that you can take the guard off, you can take the, the orange shield off, it just pops off. So I went ahead and I did a little, little Frankenstein, 
little steiny stein there. Um, so you can pop that off and carve something if, if you're trying to get into a, like a nook or a cranny, kids. A nook or a cranny. Okay, so if you follow my live streams, you may have seen a couple of these. Somebody asked me to, to engrave a the Tesla logo on Slate. Now, while me trying to center this was not the best, uh, look at how good that turned out. Slate works really well with the diet because it get, you get that good white contrast. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Now sent me a little, little tree trunky. So we got a little Ghostbusters on there. After I ran the Harley logo, I wanted to do another one just to... Uh, just some, since I had it in there. So I went ahead and did a cut and, a, uh, and an engrave on just a thin piece that's about, that's probably three mil, three mil ply. Might be three mil ply, that might be three mil, that's three mil ply. And keep in mind, I'm doing all of these in their proprietary software, Laserbox. The D1 is now compatible with Lightburn, but I just wanted to show you guys how capable their proprietary software is. It doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, but it does have some pretty decent settings to start you with, um, including just being able to pull down a drop down and pick, you know, basswood three millimeter and things like that. Well, Nick, you say it can engrave, but how detailed can it get? These are about the most detailed things that I can find that I find the least bit interesting. So that guy right there, this disc is yay big. It's about, about three inches, I think. And look at that. Look at that detail. It's amazing. And guys, before you get to the really kind of crazy ones that I wasn't expecting, um, let me say thanks to my patrons. Uh, without these guys, we would not have lasers in the shop. So I thank you. And I would like to say an extra special thank you to my top tier patrons or my Boilermaker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Jim Carter, Andy the Viking, and our newest Boilermaker, Dwight Smith. Again, clinkies, clinkies. Okay, you can also engrave acrylic. I meant to include this before that. Um, there's a little acrylic engrave and you can cut acrylic too, which is actually what this is. I just, it, the, the, I bumped the laser and it skipped off. And anyway, it can cut, it can cut thin acrylic, like two mil acrylic, three mil, let's find out. Okay, I'm lying, that's about one and a half mil. Nah, it's like 1.75, it's like close to two mil. Okay, this next one is a bit of a cheater, but um, I'm gonna do, be doing a more in-depth video about this, but I just wanted to let, put this out there. You can engrave on glass. Now you do need to have a carrier, which is on the back of this. It won't just engrave glass right out the box, but it can be done and that's on there, baby. Okay, and here's one that's gonna be a bit of a debate for a lot of folks out there. There will be more to come on this as well. But I've always been told that you cannot engrave metal with anything less than a fiber laser. And I do believe this is the case. But look at this. So can you see that? The little raven claw there? I, I had to stop it, it was taking too long to cut it out bother me but from what i understand i have that is has discolored the surface of this somehow i have gone over this if you can see the red on there it's from my shop rag i've gone over this with uh lacquer thinner after the fact to see if it would come off because i thought it, maybe it was just going on to like the plastic coating or whatever they put on the top of it um it's not coming off so apparently this is not etching because there's no it didn't take any material out but this is discoloring. Now, I think when a lot of people say I, they wanna etch metal or they wanna engrave on metal, I think this is all they really wanna do. That is something you can do with that. Like I said, I will go more in depth on this in a video because I don't quite understand it either. I've reached out to some people that like know more about this than I do. I think a lot of wear and tear is gonna to take to, to get that off there. So I think what people are actually wanting to do with it, you may be able to do with a diode laser. Guys, if that doesn't show you how versatile this laser is, I don't know what does. And if this doesn't make you want one in your shop, I don't know what will. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or materials you have a question about, leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you had not smashed that, I can't say it. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. And until next time, thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work. So when I say Arturs, <laughs> oof, ooh, no, 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 wrong laser. I don't know why I just opened that. Still yeah. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Chuck Faulkner. <laughs> I'm out of practice. This is what we do in the shop. Kind of bebopping a little bit. See, at first I was going straight in and out, but I knew what you guys were gonna say. But this is kind of what we do. When we're waiting for the laser to stop.